Uh, I think we've we've got to go with the confidence of the developer. Um, equally, I think if we turn this down on parking, given and you know, I'll, I'll put my hand up. I was one of the ones who who voted against and would vote against the application of the Sky Building, where you got over two hundred units with less than twenty parking spaces. But having done that. I think we sold the pass there, really, in some respects, when we look at the shortfall that we've got here. I welcome the fact that these are apartments. And I know, you know when one speaks to people, people in the ward, people in other wards, of course, uh, there is a worry about the number of student flats. These are not student flats. And I mean, I, I welcome the fact that nearly half of them are two bed, not, not one bed. So I think that's good for the housing mix in the town centre. Uh, I equally think we need to think about this site. What we don't want there is a site of a building which has fallen out of use, which is looking increasingly unpleasant. It, it's not nice in that regard. The road next door is a busy road, but we do have a Pelican Crossing almost directly adjacent to it. So I, I think access in that respect is a good thing. So broadly, when we put all of that together, I'm not saying that this is 100% wonderful. And perhaps so you know, I'm getting old, so I've forgotten one thing. One thing about the signage, again, I, I agree about the signage. Uh, I take comfort from the officer saying there'd be a separate application there. My biggest worry would be, how is this going to be affixed to the building? What we don't want are mineral stains coming off, off rust stains, stuff like that, coming down off the thing, making this look unsightly. But again, I, I take comfort from the fact that that can be dealt with separately and independently. So there is always a judgment call here, but my inclination, thinking about the way the building's been finished, how it sits into its environment, would be to support this application. Thank you, Councillor Fear. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, just small, few small points, firstly. On that picture, what's happening to the advertising audience that are there at this moment in time? Uh, and also, I uh, on security, as it's uh, the Staffordshire Police Crime Prevention Advisor on CCTV, uh, if there going to be any cameras on the main entrance, and also on the car park entrance, to me, there should be a shutter door with security there and also, for instance, for uh, cyclists. So those two things, and that's around security. Um, on the other point, again, what the design has been said, would it fit in? It's another square Kellogg's box in the town centre. Uh, so it might fit in. I, I don't know until it's built and then uh, we'll have to see. But... Um, I think we've lost, uh, on the car parking, we've lost uh, a point that, that the park ground floor should have been pole parking. I mean, active front in that particular location, what's going to be active there? Is it going to be another pop-up shop? Alcohol and tobacco and whatever? I, I, I just don't see it. Uh, and on the on the the levels, the, the level of the front door is below the, Barracks Road, so it doesn't show again on the drawings, which uh, really we not going to. It's only small points, but again, I think we missed the uh, missed the point on car parking. I think the ground floor should have been all car parking and uh, uh, the refuse for recycling. So in that uh, point, uh, you know, I think we've lost the uh, we've lost a really good chance of getting the cars on the road. I mean. Again, with the highways, he said, oh, yes, yes, on the town centre, uh, cycling, they go to the cycling Roxanne, again, the buses are there. I mean, pity this highways didn't go round the back to the streets behind this development where car parking places are a premium. Um, if can't get around that, it's been decided. But just a thought on the car parking, if this is uh, going to be accepted, could we uh, put a provision on that anyone who's with the flat, they're going to pay maintenance, I'm sure, but also include a park, park, parking, park, a car parking permit? That we'd have to use that permit to, um, it'd have to be through the Borough Council or any private uh, um, car parking provider. But that would be, that, that would really stop, hopefully, stop the 
the, the, the residents in this d development, if it's passed, uh, going parking in the streets. I don't know whether we can uh, do that as a recommendation. It'd be interested in the answer to the officers, Mr. Chairman. But it's an idea that gives gives us a chance then to get the cars off the road into a particular car park. I'm thinking the car park in School Street, which is uh, quite a, a big car park. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Would you like to respond? Thank you. Um, so in terms of the points on security, there aren't any details of cameras as proposed. I imagine it's in the occupants of that building's best interest to secure that. And there are permitted development rights where they could do that at a later date, should they wish to install those cameras. In terms of the, the shutters and, and potential um, security on the vehicle entrance, I, I take on that point and I think we could include a condition in the permission that we are provided with those details of the type of shutter that's to be installed within that prior to it coming into use. The advertisement hoardings, that image, the 3D images, I guess, are a little misleading in that they fall beyond the application site boundary, so they aren't in the ownership of the applicant. So they, as far as I'm aware, are being retained as such. Um, so they would stay on, on that corner. In terms of the point on the the car parking permits, I don't think that's something that would meet the planning test to, to require that of potential occupants. Again, there's no guarantee that they occupants will have a car. Um, so I don't think it's something that we could realistically secure. Could I ask if it would, could we further condition about the, the access arrangements, not just the car park, but the actual arrangements off the street into the, the building itself? Could we condition that that's that security is beefed up? Yeah. Yeah, there would be no problem. We could integrate that into one condition in terms of implementing the, the security measures for those. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Mr. With, with respect to the planning officer, we look at that view there. That's not going to be the right view that we're going to see if the development goes ahead. We're going to see the audience, aren't we? You're not going to see uh, that particular room um, on the Barracks Road. So, you know, I disagree with you there, really. And if there's any windows in that, on that side, uh, I didn't see the floor plan. I had a look at it. I couldn't quite see with any windows. And they'll be looking at the back end of the audience if there's any. So really, that's not giving us a true picture of the uh, of the development. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, as I said, the hoardings are outside the ownership of the applicant, so there's nothing that we could do in terms of asking for those to be removed. So we have to assume that they will be retained. The residential accommodation starts at first floor level. So the first floor windows that would be on that side um, are quite tall, um, offer quite a, a wide viewpoint. So again, I don't think the views in terms of the hoardings would be to the level that it would disrupt the amenity um, of those occupants. So the sorts of windows that are on that side elevation, a, a bathroom windows um, on all floors, a smaller windows serving kitchen and dining area. And then there is one bed, uh, a one window serving a bedroom, but that is the the much larger window. So I think that compensates for any disturbance that they, that may have. Thank you. Any other members wish to comment? Councillor Crisp. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wonder if the officers could tell us a little bit more about the uh, the business on the ground floor and um, in terms of attracting parking through people coming there and what sort of business it would be in commercial collection of rubbish or what sort of actually you know, what sort of business are you expecting to to turn up there thank you so as initially proposed it was proposed to be almost a micro pub, pub cafe but that led to some objections from the environmental health team in terms of noise disturbance of the occupants that would be above so as a result of that they're proposing it to fall within what is deemed within the use class order as a class E use. So that covers quite a wide variety of commercial uses, office space. Um, it could be, you know, a studio use. So quite flexible in terms of who would want to take that forward. And we have been um, requested by the environmental health team to condition that particular use class to make sure that any occupant of that unit wouldn't 
wouldn't disturb the residents above. So I think from discussions with the applicant, they were quite keen to retain some sort of commercial use on that frontage. Um, you've got established commercial uses there. We've got a new sort of there's a new burger restaurant opened up. You've got the um, I think it's the vacant is it the bath store that that's vacant at the moment. So they were quite keen to to carry that through. But in terms of specifics, I don't know if there's a an end user in mind, just that general commercial use class that's proposed. Any further questions, comments? To Councillor Fia, in view of your comments, are you prepared that to be a formal proposal that we approve the application? Yes, I am, Mr Chair. Thank you very much for that. I'm quite happy to second that from the Chair. Do we see any counter arguments? Second round, I don't see any. So in that case, we'll move to the vote then, please. For those that are in support of the application, can you please show your approval with your show of hands, please? And that's unanimous, thank you. That item's passed. Thank you. Moving on to the uh, the next item on the agenda is item five, listed buildings at risk survey 2223. There's no presentation on this report. Do councillors wish to comment? Councillor Gordon saves the day. Um, yeah, um, recommendation three. Um, officers update the survey if resources permit every five years. So that seems to suggest if the resources aren't available, the service, the survey will not be updated. And I thought, well, what are the implications of doing that? I think um, resources over the last 15 years certainly that I've been here have permitted they've sometimes the survey has sometimes taken quite some time to complete because all officers have got involved and there's a, there's a significant number of, of buildings to go out and survey but um, resources have permitted and I, I don't envisage that changing to the extent where where we're, we're not able to to carry that out but um, yeah I, I see what you're saying but I would um I, I don't imagine that we won't be able to do that in future. Just it just seemed very guarded to me as a recommendation, but uh, I suppose the conservation officer was perhaps saying she doesn't she can't guarantee that we will always have a conservation officer, for example, who knows what may happen in, in the future. So that's perhaps why she she included those words. Don't see any members identifying the wish to speak. Um, are members content to receive the report as printed? Can I see a show of hands in support of that, please? Again, that's unanimous. That item is also passed. Item six brings us on to a, an old favourite uh, land at Donald's Pool, Betley. Members on page 25 of your report pack, um, you'll see the latest information that we have there. Do we have any additional information? We don't. I'm indicating that that's not the case. Are members content to keep this on the agenda? That's a show of hands and support of that, please. And that again is unanimous. Thank you, members. That item will appear again in two months' time. Brings out item uh, disclosure exempt information. I'm not aware of any ex information. No. And brings us to item eight of the agenda, urgent business. Any urgent business? Any urgent business? And that's a negative also, which brings me to the last part of the evening. Thank you very much, councillors, for your attendance tonight and support of the, uh, the agenda. And I wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you very much.